Welcome back everyone for another episode of Fallout. In this episode I'll try to actually, for a change, follow the main quest for a bit. We left off with the part where we had the brain implant and we needed to go and be the Dr. Amani. Let's see the last place we have to do that. Let's actually go there. This thing looking bored. I wonder what this pod's for. It's been shown up several times on the loading screen now. Maybe it just looks like a good way to pry the person inside with the power coil to the back. Oh, I'm almost level 18. That's nice. Okay, we're pushed in this direction. Right nearby. Okay, let's continue that way. We have a. Okay, random dogs. We have random dog taking us. Well, my characters. My mini is fighting something. Pack of ghouls. Hey, some better ghouls. And she's taken down by just a blizzard. Should probably look at into gearing up my minion as well, not just myself. Because my minion does seem to just go down all the time. Gets looked at and she drops to the ground and starts rolling around in pain. She seems really, really got down in her usefulness. That is not hostile. They didn't attack me until I actually got in their way. That's different. Okay. I picked up a spike board. Not sure why I picked it up, but I have one. I should hear stuff. There's no one here. Now be quiet and go away, Superman. I don't like you. Sweet apartments. Another place to explore later. And find a place I'm supposed to go to. A yeah, radar. Get away from me. I mean, you can. This thing is eat weird things. Why is she down on the ground? What the hell has she been fighting now? Oh, hi, Raider. I'm not quite sure where. Okay, it's raining Raiders. Not what I was expecting. Impersonal is you or me. A legendary raider. Okay. Let's find out how to get to him. Legendary raider's too useful to leave. He will drop something nice. I'm pretty much certain they always do. Ah, here's a bat up. Okay, not quite in through here. Pass this cooking machine. Nope, not through there. Not through here. Let's go around the building then. This is impressive all the trash cans have stuff like bone saws in them. 
Yes, we shouldn't worry about Piper being left back behind. She will, as always, use her teleporting skills once she's healed and catch up. I have some food. There's food. What the hell is my cat up to? Sounds like a little maniac. I wonder if people would want to see that because it is hilarious to watch her run around full tilt. There's the way that they do come to. So one here, but not anymore. Is this misreading things? Oh. Elevator is somewhere. Let's see where this elevator takes us. Going down. Hi Piper! We just teleported into my elevator. Come on kitty, you've been played, you've been played with. Stop running off the walls. Traveling somewhere. I think I'm in the process of getting myself lost again. Which wouldn't exactly be the first time. So, let me see. Where am I? Just behind me over there. Oh, I've leveled up. That I did not notice. Oh, I have two level ups. I haven't been paying attention to Can I pick more signs yet? Maybe we'll stand to the top of the fusion course last week's been longer. It's a rather nice trait to have, because I do like running around in my power armor. Yeah, more science can't take that yet. Yeah, let's pick more fusion cores. I like my power armor. I'm willing to pay perks for the use it double long. Could it be what rat? Bull rats, yeah. So I'm not immensely off from where I'm supposed to be. But there's a fence in the way. Let's do another loop around the building, which we've already done two loops around. And hopefully arrive closer to the correct location, to where we were going to. Huh? What's that? Hey, about Hi, Scooby. Lots of mutants and explosions and more supermutants. What the hell? Where did this grenade come from? Okay. Should probably leave the looting for after combat, not middle of combat, but there's stuff on the ground. I need to grab it. That's Hey, come on, you can head out again. Okay. 
Let's unlock this door. Okay, we nice. enter the structure with another random building. Let's explore it. The Superman's holding up. Maybe they picked up something nice from something they ate. Or someone they ate. They're about as equally likely. That's from up above. That's from this. More and more. stuff down there. I got more boxes here. Looks like a chest or something. Okay. Back way down. What do we have here? Gunners. Are they gonna shoot me inside? Hi, are you friendly? No, you're not. Not friendly at all. More steam packs. Need more steam packs. Notice they're using laser weapons, which means I can steal laser weapons off their corpses. The armor feeds. A bandana. More laser pistols. Okay, the place I was heading towards is still that way though. Let's see if I can actually get to the correct person place. The good neighbor is down through here. Put the gun down so I don't look quite as scary and not likely to be shot on their sight. I don't know about everyone else, but I sure as hell would be more likely to shoot a person running in with a gun held up and ready than a person that has a gun in the back or in the pocket. So fitting an assault rifle in the pocket sounds like a so uncomfortable thing. You're not an idiot. Uh, that's it in a random comment? Uh, thanks? I guess? No, I, I didn't mean like... I could just use some help. This isn't the sort of thing I'd normally bother anyone else with, but you just seem really good with people, and I've got this issue with my sister, Nat, becoming me. I think, uh, how to explain it? My charisma stats should show by itself that I'm not the person to talk about people. Becoming you? What do you mean? I'm just... Terrified she's gonna start taking up like her big sis. Mm, think about the life we lead. No offense intended, Lou, but personal safety doesn't exactly seem like either of our strong suits. I can't have her ending up like her big sister. Dodging bullets and running from all the people she pisses off. It's part of the reason I'm on the road so much. Part of the reason I'm here with you. I keep thinking, maybe if I make myself scarce, if I'm not around her enough, off. She'll just go back to being sweet, innocent Nat, paper girl, and all around upstanding citizen. What do I do, Blue? You just love her. Family's precious. The last thing you want to do is drive them away, because you might lose them forever. You're right. I can't risk that. Thanks, Blue. Could expect wandering off with a stranger to turn out this well. You really don't make them like you anymore. You're a hell of a friend, you know that? Oh well, let's see if, if flirting works for this chapter this time. Just friends, huh? But a friend for life. Or at least as long as you don't start annoying me. But hey, 
Thanks again for listening. It's a real weight off my chest to be able to talk it out with someone. So, you wanna hit the road? Hmm. Yeah, next playthrough I should put some points in the charisma. Hey, hold up there. First time in good neighbor? You can't go walking around without insurance. Insurance? That's right. Insurance. Personal protection, like. You hand over everything you got in their pockets, or accidents start happening to you. Big, bloody accident. Someone steps through the gate the first time, they're a guest. You lay off that extortion crap. What do you care? He ain't one of us. No love for your mayor, Finn. I said let him go. You saw Hancock. You keep letting outsiders walk all over us. One day, there'll be a new mayor. Come on, man. This is me we're talking about. Let me tell you something. Why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over all right, brother? Friendly people. I'm fine. Thanks for taking care of him. Good. Now don't let this incident tank your view of our little community. Good neighbors of the people, for the people. You feel me? Everyone's welcome. Good neighbor? Is that what you call this place? That's right. We cobbled this little neighborhood together out of the freaks and misfits that just wouldn't be accepted anywhere else. You'll see. You make enough friends here, you'll call this place home soon enough. So long as you remember who's in charge. Nice eyes. And the pirate hat. Uh, this is a little tiny. Whoever point. this Brotherhood of Steel is, I'm not buying that. We come in peace, Malarkey. Oh, Great Face walks into my store. And you're not even screaming yet. Very polite. You let me know if anything catches your fancy. Did you say something about people screaming at you? That's right. Some newcomers have never seen a ghoul before. Can't handle a friendly face, I mm -hmm. see. So you need some supplies? What's it like, you know, being a ghoul? Well, it gets a lot worse when people always ask you about it all the time. <laughs> but I guess I can't blame them. On the upside, I look pretty good for being over 220 years old. Now, will you buy anything? That's Wait, quite good. You're 220 years old? Okay, okay. It's more like 270 years. But don't go blabbing that to everyone. Being a ghoul means you live a long time. You stop counting birth. Do you know what it's like being that old? What's it like? It's like being in a time warp sometimes. Hundreds of years between you and the 20 somethings running around here. Not that you'd know what that's like, would you? More than you might think. <laughs> well, now you're just making fun of me. If you were as old as I was, you would have been around since before the war. So let's hear it. Come on. Tell me what the world was like before the war, if you're so ancient. I had a beautiful house, white picket fence, and a lawn with the greenest grass you'd ever seen. It was... peaceful. It was, wasn't it? Sorry. Last thing you want to see is an old lady tearing up. Well, you're either the most well-preserved ghoul I've ever seen, or you're the second best bullshitter and ghoul <sighs> neighbor. Ah! So, what do you remember about the past? Oh, sweetie, I was an angry young woman back then. Thought the world was sick and wouldn't give me my due. Then it all ended, and well, I ended in a way, becoming a ghoul. Maybe when you get to be my age, everything starts to look like me. Anyway, I like your story better, whether or not it's true. It's the truth. All of it. You know, if you haven't already, you should check out the Hotel Rexford. There's another pre-war ghoul hanging around there. Well, we should get back to business. What are you picking up? Got any work? I do, actually. Super mutants have taken over the old Boston Public Library. 
I got a lot of fond memories of that place from when I was a girl and human. You get those lumbering brutes out of there, I'll pay you 200 caps. Wait, isn't that base that I already cleared? Actually, I already took care of those super mutants. You did? Huh. Now that's service for you. Here's your money. Oh, and why don't you take this old book of mine? Been holding on to it for a while. If you ever happen to go back, that is. Book return. Over the book. So I need to go back there and hand hey, in the book. Please. Means a lot to me that you made the library a safer place. Thanks again. Now you're here to trade. What kind of things do you sell? Oh, a bit of everything. Canned beans to carrots. I try to take every weird bit of junk the caravans are willing to trade. So chances are you'll find something to your liking here. Ready to take a look? Sure, sure. let's trade. Let's take a look. Remember, no returns, exchanges, or death threats. <laughs> Aluminium, fiberglass, and oil. There's a lot of useful things. Chinese officer sword. Look like at a nice weapon. Nice copper. Quite nice pieces of really expensive gear everywhere. Buy the duct tapes because they're annoyingly hard to find in the third place. Fusion cores because I really, really need more of them. Actually, I should probably check if I have enough stuff to actually buy the things selling. I sold my old leg armor, apparently I haven't equipped a new one yet. Bit of a meh part of my hand. Buff out, let's sell loads of drugs. And take the stick. Let's see what else we have to sell. Hmm. And you could call us. I have so many of them, they all do way a bit. I have a surprising amount of food things with me. Tarberries. They are quite me. Bear meat. Mm. Lots of brain fungus. Sort of a weight, heaviest thing at the top. We bait them as we were doing things, but I can't sell it either. I'm like, still the cigarettes aren't there. The newspaper I don't want, I already have several copies of it. The junk I'm just really more buying than selling. And there's a lot of pistol ammo that I have. I did one. Let's 
with some of that. What do I have here? Does you have more? That's my cartridges. Those two. Swap ammo for ammo I like more. Camera round. Not quite sure what they're used for yet, but they sound like the type of weapon I'd like. Then we're going to fast take these. That's minigun ammo, isn't it? Yeah, this should be minigun ammo. 500 bit of that. And let's do the trade. Inventory weight should be a lot more sensible now. 130 load downloads. Well, hello. Everything here is guaranteed to injure, maim, or kill at your discretion. Except me. I only kill when I want to. Who? What are you? I'm a woman, baby. Can't you tell? Oh, of course you are. It's just all those metal plates. You're a robot, right? A very womanly robot? Was that a pickup line? I've heard better. Now, are you buying anything? <laughs> okay, this is an awesome robot. So, what kind of weapons do you have? Anything that can kill a man, I sell. Except suicidal depression. That is unfortunately not packageable. Now, are we doing business? Can't pack a suicidal depression. Sure. Let's get you outfitted. They actually they can. Uh, there are drugs that would have that kind of effect. Party starter. That's a rocket launcher. Walking cane as a weapon. That's kind of cool. A power armor frame. Is that the wall power armor? Isn't that the thing you apply the power armor pieces to? That would be awesome if I could buy that. Oh, that's expensive. The shipments are kind of awesome. Yeah. Hey, Cleo. I hope you're buying. Even a girl with an arsenal full of weapons needs to make a living after all. I'll take a look, sure. Murder and mayhem at a discount. We'll go to check the ammo. Fusion cells? Don't know, like fusion cores. Those are even nicer. To see if how many of them I can buy. I have lots of different types of ammo. I think that's pistol ammo, isn't it? Mostly. Yeah. So these ones. Okay, a flamer. Mini nukes. I should sell well. Those type of weapons I don't need to use. Prefer taking to weapons that don't have me included in the collateral damage list. Okay, this is it for trade, this trade, I think. I will put more power cores. Probably next time I level up and see if I can finish off the last point in the trade that then allows me to use less power cores. See if there's enough to allow me to just uh, run it non stop. Run So they don't play part of the steel. The Diamond City radio signal comes in loud and clear in the computer. And that Travis, man, he got it good. Travis has fans here. That's kind of awesome. Memory then. Let's see what we can get out of this memory core. Well, 
Better decorated than Lowry's. Wait, so these are the memory machines then? Now the design makes a lot more. Nick, let's go talk to Amari. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Hey, Irma. Whatever you and Nick are up to, I don't need to know. Same as the big metal stuff. Right? Hey, Nick. Let's see what we can get from this place. Dude, you really need repairs, though. Dr. Amari? Yes. I take it this isn't a social call. Oh, these are all allowed to take list. Okay, You're the one who can extract memories from the brain, right? Normally, we only allow our clients to experience their own memories. Now, what's this all about? We need a deep dig, Amari, but it's not going to be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Isn't there some way to make this work? This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? How much of the brain do you need exactly? That is not an encouraging question. <laughs> I suppose I'll have to make do with whatever you can find. How much of the brain do you need to get the memory out? Yeah, I don't think I'd be encouraged by that question as well. Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Nick's an older model since. Is he compatible? That's exactly what I was thinking. If we are lucky, it should hook right in. But even if this works, Mr. Valentine would be taking on a tremendous amount of risk. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. Let's do it. So we're going to put the evil mercenary memories directly into Nick. Sure, I don't see any ways how that could go wrong. So if he starts talking about being annoyed at being killed before and trying to shoot me, you uh, really think this will work, Nick? No idea. But we got a missing kid on the line. That's worth the risk. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. Static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. How do you lock memories? The implant is encoding all the mnemonic activity in the hippocampus. Think of it like computer encryption. And we don't have the password. Let's see. A single mind wouldn't be able to crack it. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Any idea what I'm going to see in there? I have no clue. But considering we only have a single piece of the medial temporal lobe and not the whole brain, I doubt it'll be cohesive. Okay, let's do it. Right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there and keep your fingers crossed.
So, yeah, that sounds like such a right thing to do. Let's dive into the memories of a, in an implant of a dead guy. And not a good dead guy, as that. That's encoded so they couldn't be re read. Okay, let's dive in. Yay for brain diving. Can you hear me? Ah, good. The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. Okay. This is the earliest intact memory we can find. So we have a little path of brain cells. Let's walk these brain cells and see what we run into. Remember, you are experiencing these memories as Kellogg. This may prove disorienting at first. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from dad. That cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Hmm. What's it you, Mom? Nothing, Connie. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them sane. People always hoping for something better. They usually end up with something worse. Who said the NCR would bring back the good old days? Like before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop singing you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my boots? Listen to me, Connie. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father is useless. But you won't turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. I... I will, Mom. I promise. I won't let you down. You have always been my good boy. This doesn't seem to be what they're looking for. Childhood memories. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Let's see what I find. Try that one. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. The thing about happiness is, you only know you had it, and it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. Focus on that petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back, by comparison with what comes after, 
that you really understand that's what happiness felt like. If you don't know anybody here, and now... I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. So, we had a couple with the baby while he was already a mercenary. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I, I never deserved her. Not for one second. So Kellogg had a wife and daughter. Not sure how long they survived or if they're still. I'm just. Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know, but that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need, then I can give you anything you want. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. I was the hot shit, the gunslinger from the hub, rolling into town with the world at my feet. Everybody knew I was the one who'd shot Valdez. I could write my own ticket to any outfit in town. It all worked out pretty damn well. For a while. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. Just tell that you're focused on his gun. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's okay. I got it. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory. See so what's next. We found out that he was a key to the abusive dad. We found out that mom pressured him a lot that he needs to be a shooter first of all. The only thing that keeps him safe. And he had a How did woman you think uh, child. This was gonna end, Kellogg? <laughs> <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, they died like dogs. And you weren't there I find to help another them. Memory to try. I'll connect you. So, someone he cared about got killed and he went in for revenge. See if we can get to the next one. That was probably his wife and child that got killed in revenge for something he did. Ouch. Wouldn't wish that on anyone. Even an asshole like him. Mind if we sit down? Suit yourself. I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. Little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. So he's now a non getting mercenary. There was always a job for someone like me. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. It was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's problems. Is 
Samurai? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek away. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Hmm. So he's a rather brutal mercenary who didn't really care who he killed as long as he got paid. I guess he kind of left any morals he had somewhere along the way. I'm glad you decided to meet with him. So, you're with the Institute. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do. I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kind of ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. First synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more. And kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but... You have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. As you, can see. you heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute. But I figured they were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface. Relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed. And I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent arrangement. Which suited me just fine. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I can see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. It's a very good heart. Ah. ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. Let's see what we find here. Manual override initiated. Oh, this is familiar. Suspended. If all computers are still working, that's good. Checking through the. The eggheads never liked taking orders from a dirty, contaminated, degenerate like me. But they needed me. And I made sure they knew it. Hopefully it's all Just... I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. I found me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so... This one stood out. They didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, neither did they. Not really. Let's see what the vault triggers. never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> Guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Oh. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. So they chose to just unfreeze and leave them stuck in the pods. That's so mean. Man, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. 
least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh, I never liked to. And yeah, I guess it did remind me of uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but, uh, still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. So we needed her in specific. Killed everyone else just to get rid of them. Not a lot of morals there. This is the one. Here. Open it. going to be fine. Come here. Come no, here, baby. Wait. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm not giving you son! God damn it. Get the kid out of here. Let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence. Reinitialize. the holdup. I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. Come on, come on, come on. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. So wait, she sees what's going on for memory. Whenever you're ready. Okay, let's go. So this. I find what's next. Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent memory. So, good news, I think. Oh, this is his room in the town. It wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But, it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid. Like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. But there's no going back. I knew it was just temporary. It would be back to normal business before too long. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Is there any more people to think here? It's okay. One of these days you're gonna get your head blown. The new breed of synths could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Wow. 
That's a familiar name. I heard it somewhere. Rest. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. It's a very weird order. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Wait, wait, wait. These guys have teleport tech? Okay, that's the tech I want to have. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. Okay, how do I get out of there? Ah, TV. Exit through the TV. Okay, that's about it for this episode. We explore some memories. There's a crazy the dead brain some more. I found out some cool things. We'll continue further on the next episode. Thank you everyone for watching and we'll see you again in the next episode. Bye! We hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe or check out our other videos. Thanks for watching and see you all next time.